early TCP IP protocol development did very little for ensuring the security of communications between peering devices. So we know TCP IP, TCP IP protocol solve a big issue that TCP IP protocol can help us to communicate between two devices. But TCP IP protocol cannot ensure the security. That's why we need some way to ensure the data security and the data confidentiality, integrity, and data origin authentication. So how to do this? We can use IPsec VPN. We can use IPsec VPN to protect our data when the data is transferred in the internet. Okay, upon completion of this section, you will be able to explain the basic principles of the IPsec security architecture and you will be able to configure IPsec peering between two devices. Okay, first, let's look, la let's look at the IPsec VPN application. IPsec VPN is always used between the enterprise branch and the enterprise headquarter. Sometimes the headquarter is in Shanghai and the branch may be in Beijing or in Shenzhen. So the between the branch and the headquarter, they have the requirement to transmit the data. But between the branch and the headquarter, they must go through the internet. We know the internet is not secured because everyone can go to the internet and all the hackers they are in the internet. So when the data is transferred in the internet, we must have a way. We must have a way to ensure the security of this data. So IPsec VPN can help us to ensure the security of the data. So we can set up an IPsec terminal between the branch and the quarter and the headquarter. So when the traffic is bared on this IPsec terminal our data can be protected. And IPsec VPN is not a lonely protocol. IPsec VPN is an architecture. In this architecture, it contains two protocols, two security protocols. One is AH, means authentication header. The other one is ESP. So these two protocols can be chosen when we configure IPsec VPN. AH, it can only do the authentication and the authentication algorithms can be these three. But ESP, it can do the authentication of the data and also can do the encryption for the data. Okay, let's continue. Next, it is security authentication association. If we want to set up an IPsec VPN between router A and router B, first we must configure the SA, security association. So what is SA? The SA define the local address, the remote address, and security parameter index inbound and the SPI outbound and the key. What does it mean? The SA parameters must be the same between router A and router B. So router A will send his SA to router B and router B will send his SA to router A. And they will negotiate these parameters. For example, on router A, the local address is itself. The remote address should be router B. And on router B is opposite. And also the SPI inbound should be the same with the SPI outbound of router B. And SPI outbound of router A should be the same to the SPI inbound of router B. So they will negotiate these parameters. And if these parameters are the same, so they can set up this IPsec terminal, okay? Okay, uh, IPsec 
VPN. So how can we know the data is in the VPN or not in the VPN? What is the difference between the data in the VPN and the data not in the VPN? That is the encapsulation of IPsec. For IPsec encapsulation, we have two modes. One is transport mode. The other one is thermal mode. The encapsulation mode, the encapsulation mode can help the IPsec VPN data to be protected. For example, first, let's look at the transport mode. Because we have learned that the IPsec VPN, it has two security protocol. One is AH, the other one is ESP. Okay, and AH can only do the authentication. So the AH, we, we will insert the AH header between the IP header and TCP header. Okay, we know that IP packet, after the IP header, it will be the TCP header, right? But if we use AH protocol, we will insert this AH header between the IP and the TCP. And so the AH will help to authenticate this data, to authenticate this data. And we will know, okay, this data is original data or it is, has been modified by some hackers. Okay, so this is AH. And next one is ESP. For ESP, it can do not only authentication, but also encryption. The AH can only do the authentication, cannot do the encryption. So uh, we can only know that this data is original or not original, but if someone steal our data, capture our data, he will know what is inside of this data. So he will steal our security information. But the ESP, this protocol can help us to encrypt our data. So even if they steal it, if they don't have the key, they cannot decrypt the data. They cannot read this data, okay? So that is the benefit of ESP. And ESP will encrypt this part, the TCP and the data and ESP trailer. And the ESP, it will also authenticate this part from the ESP header to the ESP trailer. Okay, so that is these two protocols. But the ESP has one disadvantage, that is the ESP cannot authenticate the IP header, cannot authenticate the IP header, but the AH protocol, it can authenticate the IP header. Because ESP cannot authenticate the IP header, so if the IP header has been changed or has been modified by some hackers, we cannot recognize it. The receiver, he cannot recognize it. So we can use them together. AH and ESP. So, because AH can authenticate the whole data, the whole package, including the IP header, so they can work together. On one hand, we can encrypt the data. On the other hand, we can authenticate the whole package. So that is AH and ESP protocol. So this is transport mode. For transport, for transport mode, we can see we didn't add any new, any new IP header to the original IP packet. So this is the IP header, and this IP header is the original IP header, which means the source and the destination IP is not changed, it's not hidden, okay, in the transport mode. The other mode is terminal mode. So let's look at the terminal mode. For the terminal mode, we still have these two security protocol, AH and ESP. And they still have the same function. AH can do the authentication and ESP can do the encryption and the authentication. But the difference is for the terminal mode, we will add a new IP header to this IP package. 
So this is the original IP package. And sometimes our enterprise, we want to hidden our original IP, original IP, source IP and original destination IP. So we can use terminal mode. So the terminal mode, we will add a new IP header. This new IP header, this is a public IP header. So this is this IP header will help us to forward the data to forward our package through the internet. So then we can hidden our original IP. Okay, uh, that is the only difference between the terminal mode and transport mode. For the terminal mode, we will have a new IP header. And other things are the same. We can use AH only do the authentication and or the ESP do the encryption and the authentication or we can use them together so we can do the uh, encryption for the data and to do the authentication for the whole package okay so now we have learned two encapsulation mode one is terminal the other one is transport and we also learned two security protocol one is AH the other one is ESP normally we always use ESP protocol because AH cannot do the encryption so our data is not secured so we always use ESP okay so let's look at the IPsec VPN establishment so this is the process of IPsec VPN configuration. First, we need to ensure the reachability between the two peers. For example, between the router A, between the router A and router B. <clears throat> if they want to establish the IPsec VPN first, we must ensure that they can reach each other. They have the route to each other, so they can pin each other. That is the prerequisite to set up IPsec VPN. Then second, we should identify the interesting traffic. Identify the interesting traffic. Remember, the last lecture, uh, we learned the ACL. So we can use the ACL to match the interesting traffic. It means some traffic we need to we need to give it to the IPsec VPN and encrypt the data. And some traffic, we don't need to give it to IPsec VPN. For example, some data is going to the internet, so we don't need to encrypt it. But some data is going to the headquarter, so we need to give it to the IPsec VPN. So the second step is to configure the ACL to identify the interesting traffic. Next is to establish IPsec proposal. Okay, so this IPsec proposal, we will define the security protocol. We are using AH or we are using ESP. And also we need to define the encapsulation mode. We should use transport mode or we should use terminal mode. They are all defined in the proposal. Okay, next is create the IPsec policy. The IPsec policy will help us to bind, to bind the ACL and the proposal together. Finally, we should apply this policy to the interface. Normally, it's always the outbound interface of the router. Okay, let's continue to look at the configuration. First, ensure the reachability so we can configure the a static route on router A. Static route destination is 10.1.2.1 and next hop is this interface. And next we should create an ACL. This, this ACL is used to identify the interesting traffic. So for this ACL rule, we define source IP 10.1.1.0, destination 10.1.2.0. So all the traffic from 10.1.1 to 10.1.2 will be sent to the IPsec terminal. All the other traffic will not be given to the IPsec terminal. Next, we enter 
IPSEC proposal, name is TRAN1. We enter this proposal view. And in this proposal view, we define the security protocol to be ESP. And then we define the authentication algorithm, the authentication algorithm to be SHA1. And also in the proposal view, we can define the encapsulation mode, transport mode, or terminal mode. By default, it will be terminal mode. Because terminal mode, we will add a new IP header and we will hide the original IP header. So this is more secure. So by default, our mode is terminal mode. Okay, after the proposal is configured, we can use command display IPsec proposal to check it. And we can see the number of proposals only one. And this is the name we just create. Encapsulation mode, terminal. So by default, it is terminal. We didn't change it. And transform the security protocol. Uh, the security protocol is ESP. And we know that uh, transform security pro protocol, we have three types. One is the ESP, the other is AH or AH and ESP. Okay. And the ESP protocol, because ESP protocol, we can do the authentication and the encryption. Authentication algorithm, we are using SHA-1, and encryption algorithm, we are using DES. Okay, next, we will create the IPsec policy. So when we create the IPsec policy, we configure the SA manually. Configure the SA manually, which means, okay, first we bind the security ACL, we bind the ACL, the interesting traffic, and we bind the proposal, TRAN1, we bind them together. And next, this are, this will be the SA configuration. For the SA configuration, now we are using the menu mode. If we are using the menu mode, so all of these parameters should be configured manually. So we should configure the remote IP, the terminal local IP, and the SASPI, security parameter index. Outbound is 54321, inbound is 12345. Remember, on the other side, this is on router A. On router B, these two values should be opposite, should be reversed. So the inbound should be 12345, and outbound should be 54321. And next, we should configure the SA string key for the ESP. This key will be Huawei, and inbound key also Huawei. So on the other side, we should configure the same key for them. Okay? After the policy is configured, last step is to apply the policy to the interface. So we sh sh first, we enter this interface, outbound interface, G001, and then IPsec policy, P1 to apply that policy to this interface. So that is all the configuration of IPsec VPN. Finally, we can verify our configuration with display IPsec policy. And in this policy, we can see the using interface is gigabits Ethernet 001, and security data flow is ACR 3001. For the terminal, the local address is 2111 and the remote is 2112. And the proposal name is TRAN1. So that is all of the configuration of IPsec VPN. And we can see uh, the ESP SPI inbound and outbound are here. And this is the key of the SA, okay? That is the IPsec VPN introduction. So now let's look at two questions. First, what is meant by a security association by SA? Okay, SA is used to negotiate the parameters 
between the two peers. What kind of parameters? For example, the security protocol, we are using AH or we are using ESP. And also the trans, uh, the encapsulation mode, we are using terminal mode or we are using transport mode. And also the SPI, the SPI inbound, SPI outbound and the key and so forth. So this is SA. So SA must be must be the same between the two peers so they can set up the IPsec VPN successfully. Second question, what are the three possible actions that may be applied to IPsec filtered traffic? Okay, for example, here we have a router and we have an IPsec terminal here. Okay. On this router, on this router A, we will configure the ACL. We use the ACL to match the interesting traffic. Okay, if the traffic can match this ACL, okay, we will give it to the IPsec VPN. So this traffic will be encrypted to the IPsec VPN and then sent to the peer. If our traffic can match this ACL, but the action is denied, so we will drop, we will discard this traffic. And if our traffic cannot match this ACL, so our traffic will be forwarded by the router A normally. It will be normally forwarded to the internet. So there are three actions. One, encrypt to the IPsec VPN. Two, discard it. Three, normally forward it. Limitations within IPsec VPN restrict the ability for routes to be carried between disparate side-to-side -side based networks and allowing only for static route solutions. We know that IPsec VPN, it can help us to encrypt and authenticate the data, but there is one limitation of IPsec VPN is IPsec VPN can only transfer the unicast IP packet, right? But we know our IP packet have multicast and a lot of video packets is multicast and also some protocol packets are also multicast like OSPF, like SS, this protocol packets are multicast. So these protocols cannot be carried in the IPsec VPN. But GRE is available. GRE is available to carry the multicast packets like the video packets, like the OSPF packets. So GRE provides a mechanism for the encapsulation of packets of one protocol into packets of another protocol. So we can use IPsec VPN and the GRE VPN together so that the GRE VPN will help us to encapsulate the multicast packet and then the IPsec VPN will help us to encrypt and authenticate this packet. So this is GRE VPN. Upon completion of this section, you will be able to explain how GRE can be applied to provide various solutions and describe the principal behavior of GRE and configure GRE over IPsec. Okay, first, let's look at the GRE application. So, uh, this is branch, this is headquarter. Uh, in the last lecture, we learned that IPsec VPN, IPsec VPN can help us to set up an IPsec terminal between the branch and the headquarter. So, between the branch and headquarter, the data will be encrypted and authenticated through the internet. But GRE, it can help us to support encapsulation of protocols over other protocols. For example, the branch and IP and the headquarter, they are using the IPX VPN, the IPX protocol. But internet, we are using IP protocol. If we don't use GRE terminal, IPX packet cannot be forwarded in the IP network. 
So we can use GRE Eternal, and the GRE Eternal will encapsulate a new IP header to the IPX packet. So this new packet will be forwarded through the internet. So the GRE VPN will enable the routing between remote and disparate networks. The second solution is GRE can help us to extend the hops of the protocol of the networks. For example, some routing protocols have a, have a limitation of the hops. For example, the RIP, RIP protocol. For RIP protocol, the maximum hops of the network is 16. If the hops of the network is larger than 16, the RIP packet will be discarded, will be dropped. So in order to solve this issue, the GR, we can use GRE to hide the real hops of the network. For example, this router and this router, they are running, they are running the RIP protocol. But if between these two routers, these hops, these router hops are larger than 16, so these two routers, they cannot communicate with each other by using the RIP. So we can set up a GI eternal between these two routers. And the RIP protocol packet will be encapsulated in this GI eternal. So in this way, it will help us to hide the real hops of the network so that they can still communicate. And a very useful solution is IPsec over GRE or GRE over IPsec. Okay, because we have known that IPsec cannot encrypt the multicast packets. So first, we can use the GRE eternal to encapsulate the multicast, the multicast packet into the GRE eternal. And then we use IPsec VPN to encapsulate this GI eternal packet. So we can make them work together to encapsulate and to encrypt and authenticate the multicast packet. Okay, so this is GRE packet encapsulation and decapsulation. If the branch and headquarter, they want to send some packets into the GI eternal, okay, first, this is the original IP packet, maybe IP packet or maybe IPX packet. It doesn't matter, okay? So this is the original packet. When we send this packet into the GRE eternal, first, we will add a GRE header to this packet. And then we will add a new IP header. This new IP header, source IP will be the physical interface of this inter the physical IP address of this physical interface. And the destination IP will be this physical interface IP address, which are the source and destination IP addresses of this GI eternal. And then we will encapsulate the data link layer header. Most of the time, it will be Ethernet. We will encapsulate the data link layer header to this packet and then forward it in the internet. And when this packet is received by the remote site, the remote site first, it will remove the Ethernet header and remove the IP header. It will check the GRE header and then it will find what is the upper protocol. It's IP or IPX, then continue to forward this original IP packet in the headquarter. And the GRE, it also has key authentication in the GRE terminal and GRE header. So there is one field, it's key field. So we can configure the key on this both side to ensure the security of the GRE terminal. Next is GRE Keep Alive. To maintain the relationship between the GRE source and the GRE destination, we can send keep alive message to ensure that the GRE terminal is up. If we cannot receive 
the GIE reply in three times of the period of keep alive, we will know that the GIE tunnel is down. Okay, so let's look at the GIE configuration. First, we create a tunnel interface, interface tunnel 001, and we configure an IP address for this tunnel interface. But the tunnel interface is not physical interface, it is logical interface, so this IP address will also be the logical IP address, 40.1.1.1. Okay, and on the remote side router B, we also need to create the tunnel interface and configure the tunnel IP address for it. And these two IP address must be in the same network. For example, here is 41.1.1 on router A. So on router B, it should be 41.1.2 or 1.3. Okay, and then we configure the tunnel protocol to GRE. And next, we need to specify the source and destination IP address of this GRE tunnel. These two IP address are always the physical interface IP address of this and this. These two physical interface IP address will be the source and destination. Finally, we need to create a static route IP route static 10.1.2.0, which is this network. And the outbound interface will be terminal 001. It means on router 1, if we have some packets want to send to this network, we will give it to the GIE terminal. If we want to go to other network, we will not give it to the GIE terminal and we will forward it according to the IP routing table. So let's use display interface terminal 001 to check the configuration. We can see the current state of the terminal interface is up and also LAN protocol is also up. And internet IP address is 40.1.1.1, which is the IP address of the terminal interface. And then terminal source and terminal destination, these two IP address are the physical interface IP address of the router. And we can use display IP routing table to check the route. So this is a static route we just configured. Destination is 10.1.2.0 and outbound interface is terminal 001. Look at here. Here, the next hop is 40.1.1.2, which is the remote side router B's terminal interface IP address. Because the local terminal interface IP address is 40.1.1.1, so the next hop will be the remote side 41.1.2. And we can also enable the keep alive function. So in the terminal interface, we can configure the keep alive period three seconds. By default, it is five seconds, so we can change it to three seconds. And we can also modify the keep alive retry times. By default, the retry times are also three times. So uh, after this configuration, we can check it and display interface terminal 001, we can see the keep alive enable the period is three times. Retry time, retry times is also three. So it means after nine seconds, after nine seconds, if we still cannot receive the keep alive package from the remote site, we will think this GIE terminal is down. Okay, that's all. Let's look at two questions. First, what is the primary application for using GRE? Okay, first function is uh, we can use GRE to enable the communication between disparate networks. For example, IPX network and IPX network. We want to communicate IPX network through the IP network. So we can create a GRE terminal. And another function is we can use GRE terminal to encapsulate the multicast packets. 
like RIP packets or OSPF packets so that we can extend the hops of the uh, of the network because the RIP packets, the RIP protocol, it has a limitation of the hops. And we can also use GRE and IPsec together so that we can in encrypt and authenticate the multicast packets. Next question, what is the difference between the internet address and the terminal source in display interface terminal command? Okay. The internet address, that is the terminals, terminal interface IP address, and the terminal source and the destination, they are the physical interface IP address, the physical source interface and the physical destination interface. But the internet address is the terminal interface logical, the virtual IP addresses.